Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regular meeting session of the Milford School Committee. Today is Thursday, May 16th, 2024, and this meeting is being broadcast and recorded by Milford TV. Copies can be obtained at the request of this board or through central office. So agenda item one tonight is the approval of minutes. We have three listed on the agenda. Uh, we're going to work on the first two to start with, and then I believe we're going to pass over the executive session ones. So let's start with <coughs> the minutes from the open public hearing on the FY25 budget from May 2nd, 2024. Any comments or corrections on that? I see none. I'll take a motion to accept those minutes. <laughs> motion by Brendan, and I'll do second by Robin. All in favor? It's unanimous. The second set of minutes is the regular meeting minutes from May 2nd, 2024. Any discussions or comments on that one? See none, I'll take a motion. Motion by Megan. Second by Robin. All in favor? That is unanimous, thank you. The executive session minutes from May 2nd, 2024. There has been a couple uh, members that have questioned um, a couple statements in those minutes, so I recommend we pass over those and adjust those um, according to the next executive session. Anybody have any uh, concerns with that? Excellent, thank you. Okay. Announcements, correspondence, and distribution. Does anybody have anything for that? I just, oh, go ahead. No, go, go, go. No. I just had two quick ones, Matt. I had an opportunity to go to the arts extravaganza last night, which was incredible. So we should definitely do that, Dr. McIntyre, on an annual basis. Uh, number the of our, that's the plan. Yeah, it, number it was of our, well received. Yeah, a number of our musicians, they had the graphics uh, department, they had some of our um, work products um, from multiple of our trades groups. Uh, it was very cool. They had a setup so you could pretend to be a weatherman. It was just <laughs> really, really fun. Uh, so it was a great evening. And then I also just wanted to give a shout out to all the students that were involved in crafting the one feature that we just sent to all town meeting members uh, they were able to very quickly turn around a graphic presentation that we have now sent to all town meeting members so I just want to say on top of the coursework that they were all dealing with did want to give a big thanks to um, everyone that was involved in that Excellent. she said what I want to say perfect Sorry. anyone else <laughs> hey Michael if it makes you feel any better she stole my thunder too <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, I'll just throw in that um, dr. Consigli and I were the sidelines cheering on the girls on the run group at Woodland today in their practice 5k which um, the more I think about it the, the crazier I think it is that they're gonna be running a 5k and they're running 5k's to practice the 5k so I feel very inadequate with my cardio workouts lately but <laughs> they were impressive and uh, even in the rain they enjoyed themselves it was great to see all the smiles so um, it was a very good time anything else for anyone okay I have an invitation to speak next which I don't believe anybody is here for that so we will Move on. I'm going to flip the chairperson general update to bring up uh, our folks that are here to speak on the MHS Mental Health Alliance presentation. We have Ms. Gurgis here with some folks. Please step up to the microphone. And while they're getting situated, I uh, will thank Brendan for bringing this to our attention. He, um, he has requested that, that Eve come in and present to us on a topic that I was unaware that we had at this high school, so I'm very excited to hear about it. Thank you for having us. Um, this alliance, um, I basically started um, by talking to Mrs. Kincaid. I'm new this year to Milford High School. I'm a junior. Um, at my last school, I had no opportunity to do this. Um, it was private. It was religious. It was hard to speak of any topic of mental health. So coming to Milford, I saw an opportunity um, to be able to talk about this because I saw posters on the wall and I saw that there was bridges and, you know, it was a concern of mine because I didn't know, having experienced my own mental health, how much support I would feel. Um, but knowing that a lot of the teachers were supportive um, made me feel comfortable. But finding out there was no support group for kids that weren't in Bridges, for kids that were just having a bad day or going through a rough time but aren't necessarily diagnosed or on medication um, really kind of bothered me. I wanted to do something about that. Um, not necessarily make a club so everyone can come in every, I don't know, every other week and talk about our feelings, but instead to um, promote mental health literacy, to tell teachers how they can support students, how we can bring it up in conversations to make mental health known to athletes, to sons and daughters of immigrants, to 
every culture to every new student that comes in, um, people from every grade, from each gender that, um, that need to know about this, that may be affected by this. Um, so that's, that's the goal of this. Right now we're working on a wellness room. I'm, I've been talking about that with Mr. Chaplin. We're trying to raise funds right now. Um, but this would be a space for any student to come in and to take a breather, relax. Um, we have a social media account. We're working on an awareness video. Um, so for this year, I think it's been a good start. And next year, hopefully, we'll get more momentum going. Awesome. Anybody have any comments, questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, you know, uh, the Milford Scarlet. I, I try to read as many of the articles as possible, and I saw the one featuring your club, and um, you know, I try my best to reach out to students. Um, you know, when I read an article of theirs or about them, and really appreciate the topic um, and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so I don't know how familiar you are with the school committee, what we do, um, but we help with budget. So for budgeting for your uh, your room that you're speaking of. That's something that you can come back to us for and we can plan for maybe next year's budget cycle and work on and then obviously with the design of the new high school coming down the pipeline in the next few years which unfortunately you will not get the benefit of you can at least help us shape what that would look like for a modern high school experience so uh, people after you can get benefit of your ideas and goals um, to have a, a, a facility that meets their their physical and emotional needs so um, kudos to, to you and everyone else in the club um, please let us know how we can support. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming. So I just, I know you came in and told us a little bit about this. I just, I don't even think I get your names. Could you tell me who you are and just a little bit about yourselves? I'm Eve Gerges. Um I'm a junior here. I already kind of talked about that. Um, what else am I sharing? Okay. Um, I'm Molly Stoker, and I'm a sophomore here at Milford. This is my vice president. Back there we have Matt Leoch. He is our <laughs> treasurer. And then we have Jovana Wiener. She is um, our secretary. secretary. So how many students are involved in this and have been part of this project? It's in our Google Classroom. We have about 20, I think. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we would have at least 15 that come into the meeting every other Monday. Um, it's definitely growing for our awareness video, we've had many students come in. It's been really powerful hearing students from all different backgrounds and teachers even talk about their own experiences. It's been extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. So one idea I had listening, and so what Brandon said about you know coming to us about budgeting, I think is a great idea. Another idea that I think would actually be a really interesting experience for you too would be working with Mr. Chaplin around seeing if there's any mini grants available in the community that you could, I think getting the experience too of writing a grant, might, especially if it was a mini grant, so like a one pager, not something that would be comprehensive, but just to then say these are the things we're hoping to get. I'm sure there are different organizations that would offer something to you. So um, it's just an idea and yeah, I think that that would be a really great just skill for you and then, you know, depending on what you want to do in the future, be it college or even job application, saying you have that experience as a high school student would make you stand out. So it, it's just an idea not to give you one more thing on your plate, but I would at least ask him what he thinks about that idea. If you actually reach out to me, I could probably direct you to a few organizations that might be um, willing to listen to that kind of proposal. Thank you. That sounds amazing. I'll just echo the thanks. I think it's incredible. And I was most impressed to hear that you've only joined us this year and to be already kind of thinking um, that strategically and with the ability to help that many students, I think it's remarkable. So please keep it up. Thank you all for being involved. And I look forward to hearing more about what you're doing. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, I think raising awareness for mental health is very important. Um, my mother uh, was a social worker for 45 years. And actually, Lisa was her intern many years ago. Um, and so b being raised in a family where you openly talked about depression or sadness or and I was very welcoming. Um, I also was in the military where um, talking about those things is you just don't do it. And you know the military has a very high suicide rate. And so there's a lot going on in the military now to say, hey, you can talk about these things. So to bring that early on in high school, I think is a wonderful idea to raise the awareness. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, to piggyback on what uh, Robin has stated, <coughs> the high school 
has many grants through the vending machine account that we have. So I think it would be a great um, proposal for you to put together, just as Robin has stated, um, to Mr. Otlin. And, you know, delegate all your um, requests on the one pager, and your group would be the first group that actually applied for a grant for student usage as a student. So that would be really a great accomplishment. And the funds would be made available in August. So you have all hmm. summer. Yeah. I think that sounds like an incredible opportunity. Yeah. So this one pager would just be given to Mr. Altland? Correct. Yeah. And feel free to reach out for if help writing it. If they have questions about how to, is there, who would be the best person for them to ask about that? Either Mr. Altland or Mr. Chaplin. Okay, sounds good. And, and just dedicate it to vending machine mini grant. I gotta say, Dr. Allen or Mr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Anybody else? All right. Thank you very much for coming and sharing this program. This is um, really exciting. It's really impressive that you could step in here and go right after one of the hardest things that um, I think society is still trying to deal with, and you went right at it. So it's very impressive. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for having us. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you. Good evening. You grab scones on your way out, please. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually very good. They're, They're very good. Deadly. All right, so we'll go back to the chairperson general update. I have a few things here that I'll speak on. So after our last meeting, we discussed the softball field lighting and the back fields and taking on the permitting for that. <coughs> Excuse me. And the, the discussion ended with um, a phone call going out to the parks administrator. Uh, I made that phone call, and it was a good conversation. They, they completely understood the idea and the, uh, and the concept of kind of clarifying it for the community. If it's anything happening on school property, reach out to central office. If there's anything going on town property, they'll go to um, the parks department. Uh, one good, one good uh, note that came out of that was obviously we should decide when we're going to start this. Um, and he recommended that we reach out to all of the youth groups proactively to let them, the youth sports groups, to let them know just going forward if they need something at school property. Um, to contact central office and, and he did say that he has a whole contact list and he will happily uh, pass that along to us so um, we are obviously free to move along with that decision I know that there's a policy coming up related to field use where perhaps we can tuck it into that um, <coughs> for when we get to the approval at the next meeting the other piece um, was some discussions that I had with the town moderator we talked uh, a few times about having a generalized presentation of sorts given at town meeting to just share the state of the school district considering how much money that we use. And um, I called him because when town meeting members received their excellent packet, there was actually a guide how town meeting works mm -hmm. in there for the first time. And it was a very helpful packet. The one thing I noticed in there is that the reports under Article 1, which are committee and department reports, are meant to update town meeting members on anything that happened after the submission of the town report that ends up in that book. So the recommendation I got was, unless there's something important or critical to decisions being made Monday night, there's really no room or, or runway for a generalized um, update. Uh, the recommendation was this one pager that they did do a fantastic job on. Going forward, we include this in that packet of reports to town meeting. Um, which was great, um, but what that did do is raise the question on whether or not we felt it necessary to do some sort of report leading up to the votes of Article 11 and 12, just to try to keep it clear for town meeting members. Um, I went back and forth on this a hundred times this week, as did uh, as did Michael, I believe, and and what we what we ended up landing on, and we have an agenda item on the list uh, later that I'm going to recommend we pass over, is that we keep it simple. And I say that because the cover letter that was sent with the document from the town clerk's office makes it pretty clear that this page has answers for anyone who is not sure what we're talking about um, on Monday night related to the feasibility study and the formation of the school building committee. So given this document is in everybody's hands and we kind of called out what it's for, I think it's best that we just keep it simple Monday night and present our articles. Anything that comes up or if there seems to be any confusion, uh, Michael and I will certainly just, in the defense of the article, explain where we are and what we have to do with it. So um, that is what I have for an update for those conversations that have happened since last meeting. 
And again, I'll recommend that we skip over that supplemental report piece because I don't think it's necessary at this point. So that brings us to, since we're starting on me now, that's good. Um, item six, we have the Shining Star um, School Improvement Plan and Handbook. Dr. Masterson. Joining me is Patty Reed, our, uh, she's a teacher at Shining Star and also the curriculum team leader. Hello. So we all had in the agenda an opportunity to look at that um, excellent cover sheet. Thank you for providing it for the handbook showing us what exactly <coughs> was changing. Um, rather than review anything, everybody had the opportunity to look at that. Does anybody have any questions about the changes that are being made to the handbook? If not, I would suggest we just go ahead with promoting the handbook. Right away. I would just ask if Dr. Sure. Master wants to share anything that we just live. So. Nope, Great. just um, those six items for the handbook. Perfect. Thank you for the cheat sheet. 144 pages would be a lot. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I aim to I please. Skipped. I love it. That's great. All right, if there's nothing else on the handbook, then I'll entertain a motion to accept the 2024. 25 handbook. Motion by Megan. Second by Michael. All in favor? That is unanimous. Okay. We can move on to the improvement plan. Perfect. Um, I'll start with an update on the goals from the 23-24 school year. So our first goal revolved around the staff um, developing common assessments for ELA and mathematics. Um, and the staff worked um, diligently and um, met the goals for that. So they created common assessments within all areas of ELA and mathematics. So those two, that goal was met. Our second goal, the focus was on SEL and continuous learning. Um, we were focusing efforts on um, revising the SEL curriculum guide and finalizing the scope and sequence. And again, the teachers worked very hard and they completed that goal, so that goal was met. Our third goal uh, revolved around, um, it was a, a fundamental goal um, that was revolving around family engagement and culturally responsive teaching practices. So it was a lofty goal to include, to include both of these into one goal. Um, so I kind of knew that when I filled, when I co completed the school improvement plan that we might not be able to meet both of the goals and that did happen. We did get work done on both of the goals but we didn't complete both of them. Uh, we did a lot of work um, and we had a lot of conversations on family engagement and although the goal was met, that's an area that we will continue to look at and work on to have opportunities for families to engage, um, have opportunities for families to come in and engage um, with the staff. So we had some um, fun activities for families to come in. We had a kindness rock garden night in Milford High School where families came in and decorated rocks. The rocks are still in my office. Um, we did this during the winter months, so we very well couldn't go out and create these kindness rock gardens around the community when it was um, when the weather was the way that it was so our plan is um, to have those rock gardens implemented this spring um, I think one is going to be in front of the fire station uh, one is at the police station and I believe the other one is going to be at the library so I'm working with Lisa Kincaid closely on that so that will happen the other family engagement night that we had, which was great fun, um, was popcorn and pajamas. So the students came to school in their pajamas, and we had popcorn out, and the teachers read books to them. So it was fun. Um, so we'll create more opportunities for families to come next year. That in um, conjunction with our invention convention that we have every year. So um, we're looking forward to having more opportunities. So goal three was partially met with the family <coughs> engagement goal being met, um, knowing that we'll always you know, continue to revisit that. The area that was not met to our liking was the culturally responsive teaching practices. There just really was not enough time during our contractual time and during our uh, in-service days to fully meet that. We did have some great conversations regarding that area because it's, it's important. 
um, for our work down at the preschool and it's something that we will carry over to this year's school plan school improvement plan and our fourth goal revolved around multi-tiered systems of support the MTSS um, self-assessment tool that we created last last year during our work um, in this room um, we carried that over to create TCT time that we did not have in the preschool last year. So the teachers started to meet um, weekly for TCT time, um, and that opened up opportunities for deep discussions, not only on students and student engagement and student growth, but it also opened up opportunities for teachers to engage in conversations on protocols and um, procedures that we need to have in place down at the preschool because it looks a little bit different down at the preschool than it would at the elementary level. So um, that goal was met. Um, the goal was to create TCT time um, and incorporate it into, into the staff schedules. What's TCT, what's TCT time? Go Teacher ahead. collaboration time. Thank you. Um, so that that well, that was met. I know it's called it's different at, at um, different. It's called it's different at the schools. We call it TCT time, but um, yeah. it's time for the teachers to get together to collaborate. So that goal was met. So I'll move into this year's school improvement plan. So the first goal that um, you will see is the revision of the preschool report card. So with the work that was started in 22-23 with looking at our scope and sequence and our curriculum guides, um, that work started and the teachers completed that, which led to, okay, now we need to look at our common assessments. Um, we've made these changes to our scope and sequence and our curriculum guides, now let's do the common assessments. They did that this year, they completed it, um, which then brings us to this next step of looking at the report card. Um, we need to revise the report card based on our scope and sequence and the um, common assessments. And the time to do that will be during our in-service days and our contractual times. And we have a hard deadline set for us because our report card goes out in January. So we've actually started to do the preliminary work on it now. So we'll come back in October. I think we're already in the books. I'm not, I think I know, that we're already in the books, uh, to come back and present it to you to um, get your suggestions and your approval. Our second goal focuses on um, emotional regulation, social emotional learning, and here um, the focus will be to finalize the scope and sequence by creating common assessments within the area of SEL. So that's the one area that we did not include in this year's work. Um, where it was the common assessments for um, social emotional learning so we need to do some work on that and add that to um, our contractual time next next year the third goal <coughs> I spoke to earlier it's the culturally responsive um, practices so here um, we want to look at um, a rubric that we created last year it's a culturally responsive look for rubric to ensure that um, the practices, the materials, the conversations, and our interactions with our families are culturally responsive, um, and get some outside PD to come in and facilitate that work with the staff. Um, we did do some of that work this year. We had some great conversations um, with the EL director, Stephanie Matthews, and I ran some, some PD with the teachers, and we, we, the focus was mostly on the curriculum materials within the classroom. Um, but we need to have somebody who has um, an area of expertise in that to come in and work with us. So that's a goal that is important to all of us. Our fourth and final goal um, focuses on data-informed decisions. So with the work that the teachers did during their um, TCT time, their teacher collaboration time on um, the MTSS and what works for a preschool student, um, interventions that work for a preschool student um, within all areas, um, Looking at protocols, creating you know protocols for note taking, for um, our looking at our DCAP, revising some areas within the DCAP, um, 
now that the, the district has um, moved forward with um, the MTSS dashboard, the Open Architect dashboard, um, this is an area that we want to make sure that the teachers um, get some professional development on that and include that in this plan so that process is seamless for them to move from where we started our, where we started our work this year. That's the next logical step for us. Comments? I just have a couple quick ones. So thank you for bringing these really important goals to us and walking us through them. It's really helpful to hear all the exciting work that's happening down at Shining Star. Thank you also for not bringing any initiatives that require funding given the budget situation that we're in. We appreciate the, while they're quite thoughtful um, and well informed, they also don't require extra dollars. So thank you for that. Um, I have a question, Corey, and I apologize if it sh should be clear to me, but it's not. The assessment work that we did, are those currently in place or are those to be put in place next year? The assessment work for math and ELA, um, ELA it's currently in place because they field tested them. Okay. Um, are, are all of them in place for ELA? Not all of them are in place for ELA. We had just finished them up recently. Yep. Um, but the math ones were in place. Well, two of the units in Matt out okay. of the four were in place great. and we were using. Excellent. I yeah. wasn't sure if it was like develop them this year, roll them out next year. So it sounds yeah. like it's in the process. That's great. Mm -hmm. And then my only ask question is going to be when you come back with the report card, can you bring the current version? It's been a lot of years since I've seen the existing Shining Star report yes. card and then the proposed version as well. Thank you. Yes. And we have two report cards, one for our um, three-year-old friends and then one for our four-year-old friends, which makes sense. Um, so you'll see a difference um, in the three-year-old report card versus the four-year-old, mm -hmm. where the three-year-old is focused uh, heavily on SEL as it should be, sure. um, where the four-year-old one is more academic because those are our friends that are moving up to kindergarten. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you both. Anybody else? Come. So I don't necessarily have questions about the plan per se, but just thinking about, you know, the need to move towards more culturally responsive practices. I was just wondering if we could get a little bit of an update on what the enrollment and demographics looks like at Shining Star, just to kind of get more of an understanding sure. of what the student body is like there. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a total of 180 students. Mm -hmm. We have 90, uh, 94 of those students, 94 of the 180 are our students that are on an IEP. 70 students out of the 180 are EL learners, and 48 out of the 180 are students that are EL learners and are also on an IEP. Okay. Um, so then, is that the capacity for Shining? Like, are, is there, does no. everyone who wants to go to Shining Star go to Shining Our Star? Our doors are always open. Okay. Um, we do have a capacity on our role model students, but if we have students that are in need um, academically, socially, um, our, we have screenings, all they have to do is contact, the public just has to contact the preschool and there's always a spot for them. And one thing that had come up before, and so looking at the handbook, I know you mentioned registration yes. information, and then looking at the website, I know it says, call this number to get a packet. Is how does tuition work? Is it like a sliding scale or is there just a number that students who do not have IEPs pay? How, how does that work? There's a number okay. um, and it varies depending on the session. Okay. We do not have a sliding scale. Um, it's just a set number. I believe when I was here three years ago um, where we had an increase in tuition. Um, it's just one flat rate. Do you think it would be worth considering an increase on a, and hearing, and I so want to I, I, I can actually answer this yeah. one. So Corey's done some research okay. and some on that. It's something we're going to look at. Okay. Yeah, and I'm just thinking to hearing about, and I think it's important to keep the demographics, though, of the preschool in mind. So that's the reason I was asking about a sliding mm -hmm. scale. For those keeping a calendar on that, I was informed that there'll be something happening roughly October. So you, I will be back in October, <laughs> <laughs> and Pat will join me, um, where we will present the um, report card to you, and also a proposal for an increase in tuition. Um, but what I'm hearing is, would you also like me to look at presenting also a sliding scale, or? I mean, personally, I would, from an equity lens, I think we would need to um, look at both options. I don't know what. Well, options. we can. I think what we can do is we can look at that and talk about the financial impact. Okay. I, you know, next year's, next couple of years are going to be probably tougher budget years, mm -hmm. and I don't know if we can 
take a deficit mm -hmm. in Shining Star, but it's something we can definitely consider. Um, <clears throat> I would suggest some options that you would do, right? You know, so, yes. and, and then Sue, thank you for all the, the work you guys do down there. I think Shining Star is a shining star of our district. I know, it sounds silly, but, but I do. I, I'm <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't silly as you thought it was. I know, right? No, we um, like that. Thank you. No, but I, I, I really do. I, I think, you know, when you look at other, other districts and, you know, we, we have this great program that's in the high school, which is very unique. Um, and I think it's a, a great service to, the, to our, our local community. The teachers Thank are phenomenal. The, the service providers are phenomenal. It's all due to them. They're very dedicated and they're just awesome early childhood teachers. So it makes it easy. Excellent. No? Good. All right. Do we need to vote on this board? On this board? Yes, we do. So I will entertain a motion to accept the 2024 2025 school improvement plan for Shining Star. Motion by Michael. Second by Brandon. <laughs> All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you. Have Thank a you. great night. <coughs>
you know, intelligently about both the, both the process and the project. Um, I, we just spoke about this before, but the next big event is our two votes at town meeting on May 20th um, for the feasibility study and the formation of the building committee. So, you know, that's, that's the next really big jump for this, for this project. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, the only thing I have on my list is uh, this list that I hear to maintenance and capital planning. I fully expect at least one individual to ask about a formal written maintenance plan. Do we have something in the works? I know, I we, know we do. Facilities we're talking, so yeah, something started. We do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think one of the things that Carlos is really trying to emphasize, uh, Carlos being our director of facilities, is um, you know putting more of an emphasis on preventative maintenance. And uh, you know he's he's already talked about a lot of practices. He's starting to implement those practices. So that's and that's absolutely part of this process. Yeah. Good. Anything else? Mark, okay. just a question. So can we just on the chapter seventy four, right? So the due date is October thirtieth. When is the decision around that happening? What do you mean when you say decision? So when are we sort of determining the path forward? So I, I, think, I think what we do is we put a proposal to the MSBA. Mm -hmm. Nothing is decided. Okay. And then part of the feasibility study is to kind of say, like, you were considering doing, you know, you know, no Chapter 74, maybe you know, three or four Chapter 74 programs, or maybe moving to a comprehensive high school model. Okay. This is the impact of these three things. So I don't think we necessarily have to make a decision on it, but I think we have to propose something. Okay. And I think right now it seems like where we're at is it's either doing like adding some chapter 74 or looking at a comprehensive model i i think realistically it's probably going to be adding some chapter 74 and not going full comprehensive but i think there's a lot more discussion that needs to take place until we get to the point where we say hey this is this is what we're thinking about proposing would you envision that this committee is involved in the discussion or yeah, absolutely yeah so between now and october 30th yeah would you and i think the building committee would kind of take the lead on it actually okay. but I would, I would bring it to both groups okay yeah Very simple question. Um, <coughs> that scares me. Yeah. This is great. Thank you for doing it. And it says estimate uh, time to complete, three to five hours, for example. Yeah. Is that one person or is it the whole team? You know, it's it's like if you look at like the educational profile, yeah. I'm looking at the time I think it's going to take to write the actual document. And I'm not saying like okay. every time we meet it's 60 people in 60 hours. Yeah, I was just 70, 70 yeah. people in 70 hours, so I'm not necessarily incorporating that. I'm thinking about it being like the time, and I may ad adjust these and adapt these. That's because fine. some of them, like we haven't done it before, or we haven't done it in a really long time, so it may take a little longer or a little less, but it's just my best guess based, based on, or best estimate, looking at um, like what the requirements of each thing are. So once like the decision or the direction is made, <coughs> then the, the writing of the document would yeah, but I think a lot of the writing, like for the chapter 74 like document, it's, it's answering some pretty basic questions, mm -hmm. and then you're kind of answering a couple questions in a, in a little more depth. The educational profile one is really just, this is all the things we're doing. These are some things we're thinking about doing in the future. Okay, thank you. Yep. That was a simple question. Yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> On that note, anything else? <laughs> all right. So we'll then uh, thank you for that update. We'll move on again. Um, item eight, the supplemental report. This was <coughs> slotted in because I was informed that if we were to give a report at town meeting, we had to approve it as a group and <coughs> vote on it. But I don't believe it's necessary. We're just going to carry it on the way we uh, originally thought. So we'll just skip on to item nine for the audit update. If there is anything there. Yes. Yeah, so. Um out of the uh, audit that we had completed, there was a recommendation from the auditor to review our policies. So when I, I currently reviewed them all, and I did find a gap that, um, depending on how the school committee would like to handle this, but with the eye on procurement and our, the policy that I included, which was DI, the legal references do not reference any of the state's procurement laws. So I mean, it's, it's understood that we're required to follow Mass General Law around procurement. So I don't know if you would like to add them within our fiscal accounting um, and reporting policy, but there are three general laws that basically follow um, audit report uh, procurement. And it's um, MGL 149, MGL 30, Chapter 30, and MGL Chapter 7C. 
So if we included those three uh, state laws under the legal reference section, I believe then it's fully encompassed around our procurement requirement under state law. Thank you. Okay, thanks Kathy. So I guess my question is, you're a new building administrator, you're helping out, you need to go procure something. Mm -hmm. Is the expectation that they're going and reading Mass General Law, or like, what is the kind of documentation or protocol that we have for someone as they're starting? That was, um, one of my strong recommendations was to absolutely make sure that Milford hired an MCPPO, which is essentially the Massachusetts, um, now I'm going to forget, procurement officer right. um, licensure mm -hmm. under the Inspector General's office. Mm -hmm. And that's everything that I just named in those uh, chapters mm -hmm. is essentially you are taking a test over the period of three days yep. and you are now certified. So that institutional knowledge yep. with that uh, licensure, you have a basic, more than basic understanding of procurement law absolutely acknowledged for your position, but aren't there individuals in the district that need to go buy things? Those individuals are not procurement officers. Correct. So how does that work? So we have um, documentation that we have at every office that essentially <coughs> requires two ways that you get a purchase order approved. Okay. Either you provide three quotes for anything over $7,500, any purchase order over 7500 or um, you can request a proprietary request Got for it. anything over 7500 So that's just um, practice. But that's documented or it's not? I think that's the piece it's, that I'm trying to understand. Okay, it's documented uh -huh. by our forms that we require once you make a request for purchase. Okay. I'm just trying to navigate the recommendations that we had, existing documentation, someone new is going to come into your role, current practice as an example and just kind of understand the universe of what's... Well, I would assume that uh, the person coming into my role is not going to make any changes mm -hmm. and that the practice will stay at least for a year within the a district. And if that individual wants to make changes, then she would do so from her, from her office. So the documentation you're referring to in the schools, can you just forward that when you have a chance? Just sure, what sure. I was just hoping to get an understanding yep. of what um, we communicated to folks in the field mm -hmm. also. Gotcha. And then is the thought, oh, sorry, Michael, is the thought that Carlos in his role is fault, has that same documentation or is there something additional yes. given that's a, a, facil a department that obviously has a ton of goods and services flowing constantly? No, same um, okay. rules apply to Carlos and that is through the, the director secretary who does those same practices for the AD as well as the <coughs> maintenance director. And, and for folks watching at home, it's Carlos being the facility. Thank director. you, sorry, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, Kevin. Um, and so as a general matter, we, Kathy, we don't have any issues where invoices are coming in that don't have a PO in our current environment. We always have a few issues, it's okay. not perfect. Okay. Okay, so um, that's a conversation, you know, you might get something that triggers where is your documentation? Here's your request. And if they haven't um, pre-provided that information, mm -hmm. then they're required to go back and make sure that we're getting the best um, uh, purchase order request as it follows state procurement. I'm just thinking about as we, I, I understand that we're hiring someone who has all this knowledge. Just yes. I would also imagine there's this, um, to your point, sort of institutional knowledge that if we could help provide to that person just as they're assuming the role, it would be valuable. Well, she's coming in tomorrow. We'll be starting our Friday Excellent. training days. <laughs> so, of course, we're going to have all that communication okay. and discussion. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, do we want to include more references to the Mass General Laws? I just pulled up the MESC. So our, our policy follows standard, right? So, but if we want to add more, if it's helpful, I, I think it's a good idea. But generally, it's just, you know, I was curious if it's the standard policy. It's like copy and paste it right out of the MESC. But I'd be for adding if, if it's helpful. Those really are the three laws that follow state procurement. So at this moment, do we have 
a fiscal accounting and reporting yes, policy? Yes, that's okay. this is our policy. Okay, so this is what we currently have. Correct. You're just saying that we edit it to add in the legal references. That's correct. Okay. Anyone else? And then I think the only other thing I did not for tonight, I think we're gonna, and maybe it's our, they're already complete, so it's NA at this point. I think we're gonna provide just a timeline for each of the action items as to when they be done, and maybe they're all resolved at this point. No, I think um, the one area that I feel as though Wen needs to have her um, kind of recommendation relative to the work completed by the building administrator mm -hmm. form, I think that might be something that she'd want to put together so that she can follow her own forms. Okay. So that would be the one remaining item. Correct. Okay. That we have, the, we have the facilities director sign off as well as the building principal as that oversight for their own building. And as well as maybe the pictures, because I find that very helpful, the before and after from mm. specifically maintenance. Yeah. You Is know, the signing on the invoice, Kathy? We, with the, yeah. Currently, the, the directors and building, print, well, directors sign off on all invoices. Um, but I think it's just that added layer that would be great to have. It sounds like um, I'll add perhaps the policy group will revisit this and decide if they uh, feel we should add those items. If that sounds good to you guys. Yes, Mr. Chair. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you very much for that update. So that will move us to policy review. These are first readings for all three. We're going to waive yeah. the policies. We're, we're passing over all of them right now over them in what way? We're going to yeah. defer the table. There's still more work to be done. Yeah, they're not ready. Yeah, they are not ready. Thank you. It's Craig's fault. fault. Strike that from the record. Don't worry, I'm not going to put it. That should be an easy I think we should. It will okay. be ready till after there's another policy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's going to take some time. No. That's fine. I'll, uh, I'll share my thoughts on what Sorry. I heard you guys. Right? <laughs> um, all right, so we'll go on to the report of the superintendent of schools with the draft <coughs> strategic plan. One second to get there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, so okay. attached to the agenda is the uh, draft strategic plan. Um, the mission, vision, core values, and theory of action remain unchanged from the current plan that is wrapping up. What we've worked on is the strategic objectives. Um, we're receiving a bit more feedback and we'll finalize the strategic objectives and then put the measures of success into place. Um, we received a great deal of feedback um, already from both um, internal stakeholders and outside organizations this year. And the feedback and the collaboration with those organizations is incorporated into the, strate the draft strate strategic objectives. Easy for me to say. Um, the reports we incorporated in this document and the ones that are ready to go are linked, but it's the uh, 2023 DESE District Review Report, the 23-24 24 English Learner Tiered Focus Monitoring Report, the 23-24 Special Education Tier Focus Monitoring Report, the 23-24 CLE Equity Audit Report, which is um, getting close to being finalized. Um, the MCIA School Quality Dashboard, which has been in place for a while, DESE School and District Report Card, MPS Curriculum Review Plan, Culturally Responsive Practices Framework, and Title I Compact. So all those, plus a lot of feedback from a lot of surveys we've done throughout the year have been incorporated in. And I thought we were gonna get the survey out earlier this week. We had a couple technical issues when we were trying to launch it. So I think it's gonna go out to uh, families and faculty tomorrow is the plan. I was just texting with Kevin Cullen about that very topic. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, the school committee, to review this document and provide us with any feedback that you have. I'm not going to ask you to do that tonight necessarily, but at your leisure. Um, hopefully in the next maybe two weeks if you have anything that like you say, hey, I'm not sure what this means, or hey, have you considered this? Um, very open to that feedback. Is, again, we're also going to get additional feedback to the survey that's going out shortly. Um, and Craig, do you have anything you want to add or maybe share like some of the th some of the things conceptually we're looking at for um, measures of success, is, like as an example? 
Um, well, th I guess the answer is that I'm not sure right now because um, in the feedback that we're getting, we're, we're conflicted on where to go with this, honestly. Um, we, we had thought about, um, you know, making um, really smart goals with these, but it's hard to do at a district level um, when you're taking in so many other factors from all the different schools. So I think the current thinking is we'll get the initiatives down and then the, the actual smart goal piece of it comes from the school. And so like, okay, here's, here's an initiative. Here's what it might look like at an elementary school versus the middle school versus the high school. Um, and I think that that piece of it may come also, um, since this is a three year plan, it may come annually. Okay, for this year, this is what a measure of success might look like, um, you know, for social emotional learning. The next year we might rethink it and, okay, here's, this is where we made some growth, here's where we need to actually focus some more uh, energy this year, <coughs> and this might be a measure of success. So um, I think we're looking at this, yes, it's on paper, but how do we take it from paper and make it a living document? And I think the best way that we can do that is to revisit it, revisit it annually, and take the initiatives and then craft measures of success each year. And then talk it through, you know, with an update annually on how we did. I have to say to add to that, the principals and directors who participated in the conversation, I think we're very, very thoughtful about it because, you know, we, we want to do things that are, uh, you know, that are stretching us but are also realistic. Um, and I think that might, that kind of more differentiated approach might be a better way to, to tackle it. And I think we've done it in different ways. And for some goals, it works really well. And for other goals, we kind of struggle to really come up with good measures that really capture the work that's being done. But I think one other thing to add is, as Dr. McIntyre said, this is a draft. So potentially we could be showing you a, just a totally conceptual way of, of looking at this also when we come up with a final version. But we're, we're, we're close. We're, clo we're much closer than we were four or five weeks ago. So uh, any questions? Thank you. I just had two. <coughs> Could you just explain the rationale for the change between growth focus instruction to teaching and learning? I'm going to let you answer that one, Craig. Yeah, no, um, it means the same thing, basically. Um, I think uh, when we were, we were looking at what the objective says, it's really about teaching and learning. So to simplify it, maybe. Th that's it. About it. Okay, that's the simple it. part. Okay, thanks. And I think it... Um, we also changed professional learning, right? We had uh, continuous. continuous, yeah. So, I think by by saying teaching and learning, it really puts a focus on okay, what are the kids and what are the the teachers doing, what are the students doing, um, just in the d general day to day school business, and then the professional learning is more about how are we training our staff, that makes sense. Thanks. which is what it was. It just wasn't. It was a little harder to um, understand, I think. And then I'd just be curious, Kevin, I don't know if you're coming back, just in terms of, as we think about wrapping up the current strategic plan, just thinking about assessing success of that. And I understand a lot's gonna roll over. It's obviously all you know ongoing work, but just. I'm, I'm wondering if we just, because I, I think the upcoming meetings are gonna be really heavy on some sure. improvement plans, is maybe we push that off to July, or we yeah. skip, or one of the summer Not meetings. Not concerned about the timing, I was yeah, just, yeah, I think yeah. it's no, important we can, before we, can, we like yeah, shelf yeah. this to just pause yeah. and kind of reflect on. Yeah, no, we, um, can, we can absolutely do that. You, okay. you made that request before, and I think it, it makes sense. Okay, and even if it's just conversational, it's not yeah. you know, looking for say for evidence, but just I think to talk through like yeah, what, what went well, the we're components still wrestling with a little as bit. we think about adopting a new one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. No, that that makes perfect sense. Okay. And Megan, one other thing I wanted to point out, I guess, is there is a fifth objective versus the four the that were there. So yeah. do you have facilities, finance, resource management, which felt like it was lacking in the last one. That's fair. It feels like it overlays everything else, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All right. I see none. There we go. Okay, 
Okay, so we'll move on to the report of the Assistant Superintendent for Business and HR. Yes, so I have for the committee's approval this evening eight warrants in the amount of $1,242,204.67. Motion by Megan to approve. Second by Brendan. All in favor? That is unanimous. The committee also has a um, current budget update, which brings us to uh, budget transfers to bring our budget um, in balance. And the uh, transfer request is in the amount of $1,045,000. And a little uh, background information. Uh, we were fortunate enough where, well, fortunate, unfortunate enough that our special ed expenses increased, which made us eligible for um, circuit breaker relief fund in the amount of 552000 which um, allowed us to shift some of our special ed tuition costs over to circuit breaker, which freed up local appropriation for tuition, which we now can apply to our transportation deficit as well as um, addressing some of our other uh, required deficits, such as our long-term subs. Um, athletics is also in a deficit of 100,000. Um, and we were fortunate enough where we had uh, the surplus, one being under the instruction assistant line, which is essentially is uh, late hires, terminations, negotiations with one of the uh, BAs in that group uh, settling. So having um, finished our 2024 uh, assessment, we do need <coughs> budget transfers to bring us into um, alignment of $1,045,000. Yep. Okay. Can I ask a couple of questions, Kathleen? Sure. So thanks for that explanation and you may be answering my first question but I just wanted to clarify so sure. you're grouping intuition all the 9,000 so you're combining yes. all those right yes yeah, okay, exactly so when we looked at the April budget report we were over budget anticipated at the end of the year by like 44k in what line uh, in that was in um, non-public so 9,300 correct but and then now okay. we're under budget by 250 is it because of that circuit breaker reallocation correct somehow? Correct. So you're applying that there. Correct. So I had a shift yep. the tuition purchase orders from local mm -hmm. funds over to circuit breaker revenue. We have gotcha. to have those uh, that relief fund expended by June 30th. Gotcha. So there's no uh, wiggle room on that. So that was literally shifting the expenses over to circuit breaker, freeing up money in local. So that's all your encumbrances are coming off. Correct. Why that's happening. Okay. Thank you. That, that makes sense to me. I'm always curious and maybe just feel a little bit more accountable to it. School committee is over, concerned about that. So do any explanation there? Absolute. Not a big number, but just would like to know what Absolutely. That is. So essentially, Melissa, when she's a, she has school committee superintendent and professional development as her bank district numbers. <laughs> so Pleasure. she'll generally choose one line for all of the contract service. So if you look below under uh, superintendent, mm -hmm. she's not applying superintendent contract service. She applies it all to school committee contract so service. An allocation versus yeah, so okay. I just keep an eye on that every month to okay. make sure that between the three lines, mm -hmm. We're okay. Yep, Part of like her job is to make me look good too, so she's okay if you guys. She doesn't care about us. Got that it. Makes okay. sense. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Kevin, um, Kathy, could you just speak to athletics? Yeah. Um, athletics, I think, essentially, is the um, the reallocation of the school choice revenue, or I should say, school choice expense line over to local, as well as the decrease in athletic revolving for. Uh, ticket sales and Peter just has to get a better understanding of what he can allocate for uniform um, phases but so the salaries look like they're over by a hundred again it was a contract a new contract so that also is the new um, stipend that we have okay. for um, postseason yeah and there was a lot of so post that's already season. impacted us a hundred percent Wow. Yes. That's okay. That's interesting. Thank you. Um, Something to watch in the future for the next. Yeah. 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 For sure. Absolutely. Discussion. Yep. Negotiation. Okay. And then I mean I think the the transport <coughs> is clear because I think we've been talking about it for a long time. So it's just, yep. Yeah. 
Yes, okay. yeah. All right, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Sure. Anyone else? That's my question. No. Okay. Um, so I need a motion to approve those budget transfers as outlined. Motion by Megan. Second by Michael. All in favor? Yes, unanimous. Matt, I do have a question on the personnel update, if it's all right. Sure. And I think it's probably for you. What in the world is the IMSEI Assessment Enhancement Committee? We have two people, grades six to eight. I was just curious. You can get back to me. Send me an email. Is um, it hitting you, Craig? Because yeah, that's I a grant. It's, yeah, it's. Stuck um, out. It's um, folks are looking at the um, IM math assessments, oh. Um, oh. and then through an SEI lens, okay. so they're making it more culturally responsive. Got it. Thanks. Excellent. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, and then we have uh, we do have gifts yeah. for acceptance this evening and. I have four in front of me, and yeah. I'm going to ask a quick question on one of them. There's some penciled handwriting on here that looks like an estimate of totals. So that's a gift in kind. So they, we, we did our homework in trying to come up with an okay. allocated amount for the uh, gift letter. Okay, excellent. So I will uh, I'll read these off. We should be able to approve them all at once. So this is a donor from Up With Books Incorporated, and it is a gift in kind in the amount of $6,250. And I have... A gift from the Milford Permanent Firefighters Association for the Family and Community Network in the amount of $250. Gift from Francie <coughs> Daniela Alfaro and Maynor Estuardo Andrade to the Family and Community Network for $50. And one more gift to the Family and Community Network from Barreto, Felicia, and Thalen. I hope I'm saying those right. And that is for a hundred dollars. Take a motion to accept all four gifts. Motion by Robin, second by Michael. All in favor? That is unanimous. And thank, thank you, you for the to the community members who provided those. Thank you very much for these gifts. Yes, very generous. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any grants. No. no grants. Okay. So we'll get those signed and move forward with those. On to subcommittee updates. Any subcommittees meet? Robin? Well, policy met tonight. Um, so we did start to review um, the policies beginning with KF, so the use of school facilities, fee schedule, regulations governing use of MPS facilities, and the turf field complex. However, um, just based on the amount of discussion and questions by the subcommittee, we were not ready to move those <coughs> for the first read. We also did have a bit of a discussion about AED usage as well, and so um, that is also something that will likely be talked to the director of nursing about again. Excellent. Any other subcommittees? No. Okay. Just finish my note here. Okay, so that brings us to future agenda items. So before I um, let you guys, I shouldn't say let you guys, I have three things on my list to share with you. So <laughs> before we add to it, um, I just wanted to draw your attention to the screen quickly. I have four items highlighted that I am unable to identify what the request may or may not have been. So if anybody recognizes the highlighted ones, let me see if I can make that bigger. Thank so you. Thank you. I was going to say, <laughs> read them. Um, I lost my screen. Not that helps at all. So we have boosters, department reviews, health standards, and student experience discussion. If there's any additional information on what that is, that would be helpful in guiding me. If not, I will not be upset for taking some things off this list. For the health standards, I think it actually might be tied and it'll go along with this AD. So there's some protocols that are not necessarily policies mm -hmm. and just how we mm -hmm. want to connect them together. I think that's that's probably accurate. what this is. There's also new health curriculum standards too. Okay. Oh, so it might have been that too. Yeah. So I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. You, you very well could be right. I'm not sure. I mean, this came <laughs> up tonight too, so I think that's something yeah. we will want to talk about with the director of nursing through the policy committee. Okay. Um, but then, if we want to talk about the health standards as well, and I know that's going to be part of 
the strategic plan, it looks like increasing health in the lower elementary school grades, so maybe that could be part of that discussion. Okay. Is that a full committee discussion or is this more on the policy side? Well, the health education standards would be when we're talking about the strategic plan, I would guess, because okay. that's part of, that was one of the bullet points, was in bringing it down to the younger <coughs> grades. I don't know, does that make sense? Yeah, no, it's part of our curriculum review for next year, too. Okay. Um, student experience discussion, that one really had me stumped. I don't recall that at all. These are probably all Chris's, too. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say we cut that one. Uh, all right. <laughs> not because it's Chris's, but because it's <laughs> fine with me. All right, so I will take that one out. So uh, that helps. Thank you. Um, and department reviews. I, I, if I recall this one correctly, were we looking for a schedule of sorts, perhaps of when these things happen? I think so, so that we knew, like, if I have questions about, like. SEL when it would Lisa be coming to a meeting? That's kind of what I was thinking. Like, so everybody okay. know. Oh. Yeah. So I think that's what that is. I've been I've that's been shown some of the um, the back office work of Melissa, and she has a schedule and yeah. a calendar which is very extensive, and that's um, something that she follows. So I'll check and see if it's on there. It might already be there. Yeah. Um, and I was just using that as an example. Of sure. Like I, I think it is there because I think we bring people in at certain times of year. Yeah. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what that is, but yeah. we try to rotate people. All right. Thank you. So that's. Um, that was very helpful. Um, does anybody else have anything to add? I just have one, Matt, and it's going to be more for policy committee, but the MASC does have policies specifically around purchasing and procurement requirements. It's DJ and DJE, which we do not seem to have adopted. So if we could, in the future, maybe post when starting and getting acclimated, we could just take a look as to whether or not those are things we would want to adopt. Can you give me those policy codes again? DJ and DJE. I couldn't find them on our website unless DJ I missed them. So it looks like policy was looking at creating them last year and, and never moved forward. So I, I saw them in the policy document. Okay. So Thanks. I just wanted to make sure I got them to the ground. Anyone else? All right. So I have three that came up in the last two days on me. Um, if we could, in uh, the relative near future, could we get the new Woodland principal into just meet the committee? Absolutely. That'd be good. Thank yep. you. That's, a, that's, that's an oversight by me. That's okay. Um, maybe you can practice with the, uh, the improvement plan with Tim. Um, <laughs> I would also like to see if we get a facility <laughs> subcommittee meeting um, together, uh, yep. too. And then lastly, um, and this is one that was passed on um, for Mr. Wilson, um, the Pathways program. He would like to see if we could carve out some time to review that a little bit. I guess it, it's been on the plate of, if I recall this correct discussion correctly, um, Dr. Otland is someone who has helped Mr. Costa work this program over and um, they're looking for a way to transition that to somebody else to help support and grow the program within the high school. So they wanted to just share what it's for and how it's been going and their opinions on how we can move it forward. So um, I told them we could discuss that as well. And you guys said nothing. So we're good, right? Good. Cool. All right. So that leads us to adjournment. Um, there is no executive session tonight, so we can move forward with uh, taking a motion to adjourn. Motion by Michael. Second by Robin. All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Good night.